Hey DVD family, welcome back to another Discs MD video funky here and today we're in the garage because outside it is crazy windy. You're probably going to be able to hear it a little bit. I'm trying to keep the garage door open so we get better lighting, but uh, it gets too windy I might have to shut it and go to the garage lights. Anyway, real quick out here, uh, today I'm going to be talking about coil, um, what is it and how to help it, uh, and more specifically your upper body coil, right? I think we all have uh, what lower body coil is, right? And this is what I'm talking about when we go into our X step and get to our plant and we turn our hips back to go into our back swing, right? Lower body core coil. And the reason I'm making this video is it, it's becoming apparent to me that a lot of people stop with lower body coil. Like they go to reach back, they turn their hips back, and this is coil to them. But the problem is, is, do you see my shoulders in relation to my hips? They're neutral, right? My shoulders and my hips are in, in alignment. I think we lose a lot of power. We lose a lot of potential to power if we don't focus on upper body coil. And what I mean by that is shoulder to hip separation. I've talked about this before. I've been focusing on this in the off season, but I wanted to bring out another video just to reiterate and uh, reaffirm my my belief that it's necessary for us to be intentional about focusing on upper body coil. And upper body coil is all about shoulder separation from the hips. So if you stand up, put your hips forward, right, facing the screen, keep your hips still and just turn your shoulders back. So for you left-handers, you know it's turning this way, for you right-handers, it's turning this way. But if you keep your hips still, and turn your shoulders back. Yeah, you feel that tension? It's hard to talk because I'm a lot of tension in through my midsection. And that is potential energy being stored up to be able to release through your shot. We lose a lot of power if we neglect that, right? So then we so then what it looks like is we get into our X step, go to our plant, turn our hips back, and then as we go into our backswing, also rotate our shoulders past our hips to create that tension. Now it's not it's not actively like crunching your abs, right? It's rotating your torso, right? It's trunk rotation. And you have some big muscles that are that are uh, responsible for trunk rotation, right? Your internal and your external obliques, uh, your uh, traps and your lats uh, in your back all contribute to your ability to rotate your trunk like this. A lot of big muscles to give us a lot of power in our movement. So do not neglect upper body coil uh, over top of lower body coil. We need both, right? Uh, Clint over in It's Blitz talks about the power stack. Well, upper body coil is part of that power stack. So be deliberate and intentional about feeling what it feels like. So drills to do is just stand still right stand here get a disc right keep your hips still and then turn your upper body up and reach your disc back go in your back swing. and then from here release and feel that feel that upper coil release isolated from your movement right and then put it into your X step coil turn your shoulders and feel what this feels like and then release that Right? So being intentional, isolate it from your lower body and then put it all together so that you can feel what it feels like to coil the top part of your body. In order to do that, we need flexibility, thoracic flexibility, right? And thoracic is your thoracic spine from the base of your neck to the base of your ribs, T1 through T12 uh, in your spine. Thoracic flexibility. A little bit of lumbar flexibility, but mostly that thoracic flexibility is what we need. So we need to do stretches to increase our thoracic flexibility, and we need to do some exercises to strengthen up those rotational muscles, those internal and external obliques, the uh, the uh, lats and the traps. Whew, had to get through all that. So I have some things that we can do to work on flexibility and strength. Let's get to those right now. All right, we're gonna move inside just because it's cold and windy outside. 
Uh, my disclaimer before we get started, I am not a doctor, I am not a physical therapist, I am not a certified personal trainer, although that last one I've been threatening to do for the past decade and just haven't gotten around to it, so maybe one day. I love being in the gym, I love training, I love muscles, I love, love anatomy, I love physiology. Consult your doctor before you do these. You should not feel pain while doing any of these movements. Uh, if you do, please stop. All right, there's my disclaimer. So, for flexibility, uh, thoracic flexibility stretches, uh, I'll start from the least difficult to the most difficult, in my mind anyway. So, the first one is called thread the needle. Uh, maybe you've heard about this one. Uh, it's done on all fours. And what I like to do is to do some dynamic stretching before I do static stretching. So, do some dynamic stuff before you do your static stuff, just to get your joints and your muscles loosened up and limber. Uh, with with the thread needle while you're on your all fours, you can do some cats and cows. Uh, those, those are pretty easy, right? Cows are uh, tailbone and head to the sky, dropping the center of your back. And then cats is arching your back up to the ceiling, right? So just do a couple of these just to get that back loosened up. All right. And then we'll go to thread the needle. And thread the needle is, oh, can you see me here? I'll move back a little bit. So I'm going to take my left arm. I'm going to thread the needle. I'm going to put it through underneath of my right arm, in between my arm and knee, and go all the way down so that my ear is on the ground. Reach as far as I possibly can with my left arm and just hold it here 10, 15 seconds. Feel that stretch in your lat and in your shoulder. Go ahead and make sure you're keeping your core tight. Make sure you breathe while you're doing this. And then up. And then we'll switch sides and do the same thing on the other side. Take my right hand, put my right hand through. I do palm up on the floor. Put my ear on the ground. Keep your core tight. Breathe while you're doing this. Feel the stretch in your lats and your shoulder and your back. And then back up. So do that, you know, two or three times each side. Get a good stretch in your back. And that's called thread the needle. Let's move on to the next one. So the next one are lying windmills. You're going to need something to prop your knee up on. There's different ways to do this. I'll show you the way that I do it. Um, the different variations of weight keep your legs. Um, some people, let me show you real quick. Some people keep keep their legs together, right? I keep my underneath leg straight and my top leg bent. That's why I need something to rest it on, right? So if I'm on my side here, bottom leg straight, this knee bent at a 90 degree, arm straight out in front of you, and then we're gonna windmill back in the opposite direction. Bring this hand up and back and try to lay it on the floor behind you, okay? What I'm trying to do is put my right shoulder on the floor. You might not be able to. You might even be able to get here. You might even be able to get here. But soon as you start increasing your flexibility, keep your knee in contact with whatever's underneath of it. And then put your hand on the floor. And again, leave here for like 10 or 15 seconds. Make sure you're breathing. Make sure your core is tight. Right? Be active in your stretching. Be deliberate about your stretching. And then bring it back. And then, of course, you need to do the other side. So I'll do it. So I'm facing the camera. Left knee up. Right leg extended. Hands out in front. Up. And touch. You can touch your hand to the floor, but more importantly, you want to make sure this shoulder, this opposite shoulder is touching the floor. So your back, your upper back is almost flat on the floor. Again, keeping your core tight and breathing through the stretch. You should feel this all down in your obliques. Right through here, feel a nice stretch in your obliques. And then bring it up and bring it over. Again, do two or three on each side there. And then we'll move on to our third one. All right, our third one are seated twists. So this one, we're going to be putting our feet straight out in front of us, keeping our spine as straight as possible. Don't lock your knees. 
uh, keep a little bend to them, feet straight up, out in front of you. And then what we're going to do is going to take our left leg and bend it up, and then put our le our foot behind our opposite leg. And then we're going to take, if your left leg is over, you're going to take your right arm, your right elbow, put it behind your left knee, and turn yourself to face backwards. Again, breathe through it, keep your core tight, and feel the stretch. You'll really feel the stretch in your lats, in your traps. You'll also feel it down in your obliques, right? So you'll feel that whole rotational stretch. So I try to keep my head as neutral as possible. I don't crane it to look behind me, but I want to turn around to be facing as backwards as possible. And then again, you do it to one side, you have to do it to the other side. So right foot over my left leg. And I am more tight this way, which is bad for me because this is the way I rotate for my backhand. So I need to do this more. And again, left elbow on the outside of the right knee. Turn backwards, try to keep my spine straight, keep my abs tight, breathe through the stretch. Try to look back as much as possible. There you are, those are seated twists. One more, and then we'll move on to some strength training. All right, this last one is done standing up, and this is a variation of a standing windmill. Okay, so feet a little wider than shoulder width apart. The, the wider you have your feet, uh, the more it takes the hamstrings out as being a limited factor. I also like to keep my knees slightly bent, like don't squat, but like keep a little bit of bend into them so you don't want to put a lot of pressure on your knees when you're doing this. But again, feet a little wider than shoulder, shoulder width apart. We're going to put our arms straight out and I'll start going down with my left arm. What I'm going to do is take my left hand, reach down and touch my right foot. And while I'm doing that, reach my right arm up into the sky. Okay, so it looks like this. Try to keep my legs as straight as possible. Okay, and when I get down here, I'd like to use my foot to help brace myself and turn myself so I can get this arm as far up to the ceiling as possible. And we'll feel this a lot in our obliques, you'll feel it in your hamstrings, you'll feel it in your hip flexors, you'll feel it in your glutes, okay, right? and then back up. And then again, we got to do it to the next side. You have to make sure that you're breathing through this. If you don't, you're going to pass out, so please breathe through this, all right? So now we're going to take our right hand down to our left foot and do the same thing. Use the foot as a brace to pull us and get this arm as far to the sky as we can. Breathe through. This one is tougher. And then back down. So this one is, is a more advanced stretch. So I would start with the first three and get a good grasp, good flexibility there. And then you can start working on doing this one. So those are the stretches that we can do to help with our thoracic flexibility. Now I'll go over a couple exercises that we can do to help with strength. All right, the first thing we're going to do is seated rows for uh, lats and traps. Uh, and I do like, I like to do high to low rows when I'm trying to engage both of these. Um, if you do straight up and down, that's a lot more lat. If you do um, straight in a line rows, seated rows, that's more of your uh, traps and rhomboids doing like a 45 degree angle high to low pull or maybe a little less I guess that's a little less than that uh, engages both better I think so I have bands here I, I have a thing that adapts it to my door so I can pull against my door if you have a pole you can wrap it around just whatever you can do to mimic this um, and put the point that you pull against above your head you know, 30, 33 degree, 45 degree angle is fine, but we just want to pull from high to low, right? So neutral spine, straight spine, 
arms straight out in front of you. And you can do variations of how you hold your hands if, you're, if they're supinated or neutral or pronated. Uh, up to you uh, for comfort level. <laughs> They've done studies with electromagnetic pulsing to, to find out which one activates the lats better. But I don't get into all that. Just whatever's comfortable, use it. So, so straight out, and then we want to pull down, back and down, right? So I'm coming from above my head, and I want to finish at my chest, right? And I'm pinching my shoulder blades behind me and squeezing through the motion, right? Down and back and squeeze through the motion. And when I go back, don't just, don't just get here and go, Phew. control back. So squeeze as you're going back. And then squeeze as you're going down, right? So however many is comfortable, 10 to 12 of these, just really feel that back tighten, that back squeeze. It's like you're trying to pinch a pencil in between your shoulder blades when you come back, right? So pinch, squeeze, back, and down. Do, you know, 10 to 12 of those, do three sets of them, and then we'll move on to our next one. All right, so the next one that we're going to do are rear delt flies or bent over flies, whatever. Uh, I have uh, kettlebells here, and I'm doing real light right now just for, and these actually should be real light. I, I, if I go above 10 pounds on these, it's a lot. Hold on, my dog wants to join us. All right, you want to go outside? All right, hold on. And we're back. Okay, so knees bent, feet about shoulder width apart. I'm going to bend over at the waist. I'm going to keep my spine neutral, my head neutral, my head facing down. I'll reach down, grab my kettlebells and I'm gonna go straight up and back. And again, I wanna to try to pinch that pencil between my shoulder blades, right? And this is more rear delt, this is more trap than lat, but these are good for rotational strength as well. And good for pull through strength. So I'm gonna do 10, 12 of these, Really, again, feel the squeeze, go all the way back down and control coming down, right? I don't want to get up here and then just let them drop. I want to go control up and then control down. Keep my spine neutral, head neutral, control up, control down. Again, three sets of these, 10 to 12 a piece. Rotate those and that'll be good strength for your traps, your lats, for your rotational strength. All right, so now for our obliques, and these are called wood choppers, and there's two variations of these. You can do rotational, or you can do anti-rotational. I'll show you both. So, I have my bands again. They're lodged in my door again. I'm going to bring them out so they're tight, grab both of the handles with both of my hands, and we're going to just chop wood. I'm going to bring, for the rotational, I'm, I want to rotate my trunk, right? So I'm going to face about a 45 backwards, keep my arms straight out in front of me, and then bring the bands through until I'm about a 45 on the other side, and then slow back, right? Out through, rotating as I go, hit another 45 so I still feel tension, and then slow back. And you should feel a lot of pressure in this hip and down into your back foot as a brace against the resistance as I'm pulling through these, right? Keeping my shoulders and arms locked right in front of me the whole time. These are the rotational wood choppers, okay? And this is for internal, external obliques. Now, there's a variation where you do anti-rotational, and I would advise doing both because they focus a little bit differently on the muscles, doing them one way versus the other. But the anti-rotational is keeping my body, my torso facing straight the entire time and only moving my arms, right? So I'm resisting the rotation with my core instead of enhancing the rotation with my, score, with my core, okay? So facing forward, reach. I'm going to stay straight ahead with my, with my uh, torso, with my abs and with my hips. Stay straight ahead, and I'm just going to pull my arms through. 
And you'll feel it's a little different when you do the anti-rotational uh, the, the anti version of these than when you do the rotational version. So again, do both sides, do 10 to 12 each, good for the internal and the external obliques to help with rotational strength. Let's do one final exercise and then wrap it all up. All right, one final strength exercise. Oh, let me get my chair out of the way. Okay, that's better. So these are oblique crunches. You know, you know the standard ab crunches. These are the oblique version of crunches. So you're gonna get on the floor. I do weighted, you don't have to do weighted. On the floor, on your side, knees up. Uh, not quite a 45, but knees bent to give you some stability. You can also do the legs straight out if you want to. I don't, I do both to the side. We wanna be laying almost flat on our back or flat on our back, so both shoulders are on the floor. Now I'm gonna take, if you want a kettlebell, you can, you don't have to. Uh, you can do these non-weighted, but I'm just gonna reach for this guy. Hmm. I'm going to go back down, make sure my shoulder blade touches the ground so I have full extension, and then reach up as far as I can, try to pull my shoulders up off the ground, and you'll feel a lot of tension in through here, and then back down. Again, the weighted version looks like this. Push that weight up through the ceiling as far as I can, and then all the way back down, controlled movement back down again, and then up to the ceiling squeezing as much as I possibly can, try to get my entire shoulder blade off the ground, and then control back down. Again, I don't know, 15, 20 of those on each side with, with obliques, with abs. Uh, those muscle fibers take a lot more repetition to fire and get tired. So um, you know what? I'm going to give you one more bonus, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. So these are called Russian twists. If you've never seen them before, there's a lot of variations. I'll give you the easiest variation. Seated on the ground, knees bent up in front of you. What we're gonna do is we're gonna twist and touch the ground. Uh, we want, sorry, we want our shoulders back a little bit. We wanna be seated, let me show you. We wanna be seated back a little bit, right? We don't wanna be straight up and down. We wanna be seated back a little bit. What we're gonna do is take both hands and touch the floor. And I'll do this in front view. Take both hands and touch the floor on both sides, seated back, right? We're gonna keep our abs tight, our core tight through this process. Make sure we're remaining back in our posture, spine straight, but leaning back, touch left and right 15 times on each side, three sets of that as well. This is good for the internal and external obliques variations of this once you once this becomes too easy for you you can lift your feet let me show you lift your feet off the ground and touch on both sides make sure you touch the floor don't cheat touch the floor on both sides right another variation is using a weight right and setting the weight down picking it up setting the weight down picking it up and then the total advance like to the moon advanced is using the weight with your feet off the ground, making sure the weight goes down. And I even like to let go, pick it back up, put it on the other side. So Russian twists, good exercise for internal and external obliques as well. well let's wrap it up. All right, well, there you have it. That's where, why and how we deliberately focus on upper stack co coil in our throw again we need to be deliberate and intentional about it i think we lose a lot of power if we don't focus on coiling the upper body with the lower body so hope you enjoyed this hope it was useful and helpful to you uh, as you practice and get better put it in the comments below what you think of it if you want more stuff like this i'll certainly do it i love to work out love to train love to learn about it uh, again, I, I want to be a personal trainer. I've been threatening to do that for a long time, but just it takes a lot of time to do. So with a full-time job and a family, it's tough, but maybe one day. We'll see. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Until next time, enjoy the journey. Here's your verse of the day.